The president and CEO of the Greater Albion Chamber of Commerce, Eric Worley, and the brand new marketing manager, Anna Watson. Nice to see you again, Eric. Thanks welcome. for having us. Anna, welcome to JTV. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and welcome <laughs> to your new job, too. Thank you. So this is a new position, Eric. I don't think you've ever had... I don't think you've even had a staff before. It was, it was a one-man <laughs> show for a while, yeah. Uh, when I started in November of 17, it was just me. And I had a couple people help every once in a while for different events that come on. I had an intern for a little bit. Um, and then just this last um, September, Anna started as an intern just doing one specific project for us. And she did such good work, we were able to expand that into a full-time position for her. So, Great. And you're just... Uh out of Albion College. I am, just this May, I finally made it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. So what's your background? Were you interested in getting into marketing as a career? I was, when I went into college, I knew I was interested in the field of communication. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it, but I knew it was broad and I had a lot of places I could go with it. Um, and so I, when I started the major and started taking classes, I, under, like, I started realizing that I I really like marketing and that's something I could see myself doing in the field and I was fortunate enough to link up with Eric my senior year and get some experience that ultimately led to a job which has been awesome so far. <laughs> well that's a great story for the community and for the college because the, really it's exciting when someone stays in Albion after yeah. they graduate. Yeah we have such a talent yeah. pool coming through Albion College they do such a great job with the students we want to see more of that. We will try to encourage mm -hmm. our members and everyone, if you have a position, like look and see who's available at the college, whether it's an internship to start that might lead to a position like Anna did, or even if it's just help with an internship, you can get some really bright kids coming out of Albion College that can really help. So there's a lot of stories to uh, communicate now, now that you have a marketing manager. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, talk about, I think, the most recent thing that happened in Albion, and that was, uh, I think, last week, Walk the Beat. Yes, we had, this was the fourth time we've had Walk the Beat. Um, the original um, event started over in Grand Haven. Uh, they've been doing it for years over there, and then Cliff Harris, who runs the event, he's an Albion College uh, professor, so mm -hmm. kind of that more town and gown connection. He brought it over um, four years ago, started out a little smaller, and it's since grown to 30-some locations, um, count like 40, 50-some bands, and they go all across the community, up and down Superior Street, and then uh, Michigan Ave over towards the college, and you can see some of the pictures. We had the streets full of people like it hasn't been in years, so um, all different kinds. We had. Um, banjo players, guitar players, singer-songwriters, full bands, rappers. Um, we had a horn section that was playing mm -hmm. throughout the day, so it was just a, a nice event. The weather cooperated beautifully, mm -hmm. so it was a perfect day for us. It almost doesn't look like Albion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we really? haven't seen that kind of <laughs> that kind of people coalesce. I was talking to someone today, and I said it was nice to see because for the festival we shut the street down, so you can have a whole lot of people downtown. But for Walk the Beat to have all those people just on the sidewalk and it kind of looks like we're this vibrant, thriving community and that's kind of where we're trying to get this momentum to have that not just be a once a year thing with Walk the Beat, have it be more often that you drive down down Albion and you see the streets are full of people. I would guess for you, Anna, the transformation since you arrived in Albion to begin college to, to today has been pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it's been crazy. I was talking to some people who started with me freshman year and we are just really inspired by the city's story and seeing it grow even in just our four years at the college has been very impactful. It's awesome. We're, we're rooting the city on. Even people who have left and moved to other places, they always message me and like, what's new in Albion? What's going on? And I have a long list of things to tell them, which is cool. Well, we have seen a uh, number of new businesses. And I think just in, since the last time you were here, we've got a couple more that, that opened. Yeah, we just, uh, I think since the last time I was here, we opened the Foundry Bakehouse in Delhi. Mm -hmm. um, we had a ribbon cutting for them and they're officially open conveniently half a block away from me. So it's always nice <laughs> to have my breakfast and lunch spots close by. Um, but yeah, they're, uh, it's, it's owned and operated by the Dobbins family. They do Caster Concepts, the Pure Albion store, which is just down the block from them. Um, they're huge investors and supporters in everything going on in town. And so they saw the need for a bakery and a deli, and it's been hugely popular since it opened. And they really try to tie the history of um, 
Albion into what they do. So a lot of their menu items are named after the old Albion malleable, um, any sort of iron working type tech, um, terminology. Mm -hmm. So they name things castings and the bellows and um, I can't think of all the names, there's so many <laughs> of them, but they really try to tie that history together with what they're doing. So it's, it's great to see that place flourishing downtown. You've also got a number of developers who are hoping to fill some retail space and second and even third story uh, residential. How's yeah. that coming along? Good, just the spot between um, the bakery we just showed and the brewery under the block, um, they're looking to replace the whole facade of that block because it was made out of sandstone and it's falling apart as we speak. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna replace that, they're gonna gut the upstairs and do new apartments and then um, able to do that without disrupting the businesses that are currently operating on that ground floor, like the Pure Albion store. Um, we have a um, h and Block location right there, so they can keep those places where they are, not interrupt their business, but then do all this redevelopment up top. Next big event is the Festival of the Fork. Yes. And that's probably the first question people who've never heard of Festival of the Forks, mm -hmm. they think it must be some sort of a eating uh, event, forks, but no. And that's, and that's kind of, <laughs> so it's the duality, that's kind of how it started. Um, Albion's history with um, all the different ethnic groups we had, all the different populations and nationalities, they would all bring their food to downtown and kind of share their recipes and share their food. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to get it back to that sort of feel. We're trying to get um, different types of food. We're trying to encourage food trucks to come over. So if anyone's listening that has a food truck they mm -hmm. want to bring by the end of September, contact me, let us know. <laughs> we're trying to build it back up to be that kind of food festival like it was. And then obviously the other side of it is the forks in the Kalamazoo River right there. So people think Festival of the Forks, they immediately think of food, but it's also celebrating the river and what it does for our community. There you go. Uh, just, I think last year? These yep, that was of? last year's. Yep, we're looking to make it even bigger this year. Um, we'll have two parades. We'll have live music throughout, um, car show and um, a pet show on Friday night, and then live music at the brewery Friday and Saturday night, and then um, food vendors, arts and crafts, all up and down the street. You know, with your new position, uh, your first career job, right? Yeah. So what are your goals? What do you want, hope to accomplish in, in the role? Oof, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of think right now, I've seen Eric, he's kind of like an idea guy and he has a lot of really good ideas for the city of Albion and I'm really excited just to kind of help him make some of those happen. Trying and to help wrangle him, them in. Yeah, <laughs> help him with the details of those ideas and help him make it look really pretty and reach a lot of people is kind of just to help the city continue to grow and have more things it can be really proud of. I would imagine that because you've been able to add a staff person that there's uh, growth in the, in the chamber, which yes. probably is a reflection of the yep. community growth. Yep, as the community grows, we can get the opportunity to get more and more chamber members and that allows us to do more because all the money we're getting in from doing festivals, from the chamber membership, all that stuff just gets immediately put right back out into the community through other festivals we're doing, marketing initiatives, hiring more staff to do those types of things. So as Albion continues to grow, so will the chamber. What's the next big thing? Next big thing, we just had a marketing um, and branding strategy done. So we have brand new um, City of Albion and Enjoy Albion logos going out there. So we're gonna slowly start to roll those out through over the street banners, lamppost banners, uh, we put decals all over everything we can think of, pens, coffee mugs, whatever, something we'll stick to, we'll put a logo on it, and then work with the city and other community um, organizations to do some more official like welcome signage and things like that. And so we've got the, the buy-in from our city, um, they're excited to do it, the community foundation, other organizations in town are ready to start implementing this. And so when you go to some other communities, like coming over to Jackson, you see this consistent, cohesive, imaging going on and so we're going to try to do that in Albion too, try to follow your guys' lead. So yeah, a new bakery, a new restaurants, a new hotel, you've got um, really a lot of new things but for you as a student, your experience, what is missing? What could Albion use? What would be a good opportunity for, for a business? I think as like a student who toured the campus and went downtown and picking a college, something that I 
think they could always use more of is more food options, more shopping options in the downtown stretch would be so awesome to see it full of life and like on nights have like people in the streets and going out to eat. That would be really cool because I think that was something when I looked at it my freshman year, I was like, we could use more of that. And that's, <laughs> we're definitely on the right direction and we're seeing that happen. But I think filling up our downtown spaces would be really beneficial. And from what I can tell, the long time existing uh, food businesses, they, uh, they are welcoming the new because that just adds to, the, I think, their, their business as well, like the Cascarellis. Yeah, so Cascarellis has seen an increase from the hotel being right next door to them because the hotel has a little bistro, but they don't have a full-fledged restaurant like Cascarellis. So uh, they're seeing a lot of business from people staying there, coming over with their families and grabbing a bite to eat. And then having new businesses come in always pushes you to do a little bit more. So um, there's kind of competition back and forth, like who can make the better burger, who has the better specials. And so... Um, Gina's Pizza and Deli, the Little Red Lunchbox, Lopez Taco House. We have a lot of businesses that are downtown serving food that are kind of benefiting from more people just being downtown. Because you may come in one time for the brewery, but then you come back the next time, maybe going to Lopez. So you're kind of getting more exposure as people come in. All right, next up, the Festival of the Forks. And that is uh, September 20th and 21st in downtown Albion. Great to see you guys. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, and congratulations, Anna, on your new uh, new position. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of you. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> the yes. president and CEO of the Greater Albion Chamber of Commerce, Eric Worley, and the new marketing manager, Anna Watson. Well, the Festival of the Four 